Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be uh, showing you how we built our stanchion. Uh, why we use our stanchion and also uh, if you have a family milk cow, I imagine you even have a stanchion or want to build a stanchion. So uh, this video is just a short video of ours. We do have two on our property. Um, the one that you see back here is the one we use every morning. Uh, we do have a backup one just in case something happens to this one. Uh, the one on the other side tends to be a little bit smaller. It kind of fits my, my low line or mini jersey more than it does my full size. Uh, but it could be used if we want to. So I'll show you that one probably in another video. Uh, but today we'll walk you through uh, kind of our catch pin, our stanchion, and how uh, our protocol works every morning. All right, just a simple little catch pin. Uh, we learned if you watched our very first video of Elsa, um, you you saw that we had to build some kind of catch pin because she was wild at that point now uh, fast forward six to seven weeks from uh, That point with that cow. Uh, we don't even really need this catch pin We left it here because a lot of times uh, if we're feeding her some hay and we're waiting on getting this cleaned out Because as you see it's been rainy. So we're having to do some work uh, Just kind of getting the water out of it things like that We'll put her in this little catch pin let her eat some hay or let her eat on the little grass that's there so uh, it's, we've kept it up because it's going to do what it needs to do uh, simply the barn very small little barn we do have a bigger barn on the other side of the house uh, and also a little hay barn that we have in a shed uh, however in this case where we're milking um, Elsa uh, this does this is sufficient all we have is just a cover basically over us we built the stanchion inside a stanchion can be freestanding uh, for sure. The only reason we didn't do that is because, hey, we had this wall here. Why not utilize it? So we built our stanchion into the wall. But basically, you need cover from rain, from snow. Uh, I would imagine if I feed, <laughs> if I fed Elsa enough, she may stand there and let me milk her. But ultimately, you, that that doesn't work long uh, longevity-wise because, again, you have to find a way to make sure that you're out of the elements, make sure she's comfortable and that she gets used to going to the same place. Uh, every morning, I turn that light on right there, and pretty much she runs right in here. I have this gate open pretty much uh, before I turn the light on. So when I flip the light on, gate's already open, she's coming running, she's waiting on her food. So mo that, again, that's why we have this catch pin too, because pretty much she'll run in there. If she don't see food there, she goes back here and start e eating on some hay or uh, some grass until I put the feed or good hay there. So All right, so uh, you have the stanchion. Now you see this little barn is just a pass-through barn. When it's rainy, as you see, it's nasty right now because we had a major flood last night. But uh, we just basically, they, they come in there. We'll put some hay in there, some feed in there to kind of draw them in and pretty much keeps them out of the elements just in case it is kind of bad weather. Uh, but in the mornings, uh, we either have her in this field or in the, the fields over there. We break collar, gate opens, and she runs in. This stanchion, first and foremost, you have to have the V. Uh, that's the most important part of a stanchion um, and, and really bracing. You can use a stanchion for a lot of things, but m it's really just used for milking. Um, as you see, our V is right up front. We, we got this whole barn is built basically out of a, a lumber from a, a rough cut lumber mill that is just scrap wood. But to be honest with you, I got all this wood for this barn for $53. So what a steal, you know, so we built the structure. Uh, this is all built out of the same thing now you see the bracing right here um i've got it about a foot and a half in the ground it's concreted in and i've got it double board now if you want to use a four by four or six by six but this was a two by eight post that we used and we just put two together so now we've got a really big beefy post but uh basically it goes all the way up and all the way down uh we concreted it in pretty much that's the main um really support of the whole stanchion especially if you're using basically a one-sided stanchion uh, if you got a two-sided extension, of course, you would have to put both those, uh, kind of beef up both sides. But pretty much this is concreted in. And, and basically, once we put it in, we built the post around it. Now, as you see this little board here, it is really nothing. It's just a really old one-by-one, one, uh, one-by-eight uh, little fence board. Um, if you have an aggressive cow or you're trying to do more with your stanchion, such as, uh, you know, if you're, if you're banding a, a bull or steer or... Uh, or you're trying to treat cows in the stanchion as a head gap, you need to beef this up. Uh, for me milking my cow, uh, I, I think that this is really more just for a safety issue to say, hey, you don't need to come this way. Um, now, she, if she wants to, she's broke this before. I mean, to be honest with you, I had a cow spook her one time, and she broke it right in two. However, this board is just simply just to kind of put a buffer zone between me and her. 
I, I kind of get under it. So it's, it's not a real major support issue. It's not even really a safety issue as much as it just kind of gives her a barrier. Now, again, if you have aggressive cow or you're doing more things with this Stanton than just simply milking a milk cow that's been used to this, you need to beef this up. But pretty much if you're just using this strictly for milking, all you want is just a barrier just to kind of make them say, hey, this is your area, this is my area. So uh, a good little cross beam, nothing major to it other than just uh, it gives a barrier. Uh, you see the brace post, again, another brace post, a uh, very important part because, again, uh, if your cow is, is can't go forward, what way is she going to go? Backwards. A cow goes hard forward or backwards. So if she gets spooked uh, from this side from another cow, and you don't have anything behind her, she's going and she might kick you in the, in the way or whatever. So what we've done is we put a, a just basically a chain. It's, it's like a 350 pound max. Now she could break it, I guess, if she really wanted to. But uh, as long as she feels something on her, uh, I, I put that right on her. She goes, it hits her tail. So therefore, there's no reason for her to back up. She feels the pressure there. There's no reason for her to, to want to back up. Now, if she tests it, she'll feel the resistance. No big issue. I'll tighten it up if I need to. But uh, she's never really, you know, tried to get out of that. Like I said, the only time she ever broke this piece, that one little uh, one by eight, was just because a cow spooked her and really spooked all of us. And <laughs> it was just a bad morning. But, hey, it worked out. Uh, but, again, you definitely need this brace in because, ultimately, that is what's going to keep her from going backwards. Now, um, you see, this is pretty wide. I, I don't have a need to keep her close to me now if you wanted to right here you could hook a two by four with a chain come straight out to here and basically instead of hooking this chain to the wall you could hook to the two by four to here what that does it allows you to have restriction against her and pull against her and you can pull that two by four closer to her and closer to you if she's wandering this way and you can't really get to her udders when you're milking her it pulls her closer now my other extension has that uh, I haven't seen a necessity for this for Elsa because she's pretty wide and plus she likes to hang closer to this side because pretty much those V's can be moved and pushed her over a little bit. So when she you know, tries to get over to the side, I just kind of hit her back a little bit and she comes right over to me. So if you want to put that other bracing in right here, it's just a two by four, maybe put it on a chain where it can be moved and tightened. Uh, with a chain like this to her so that way it brings her tighter to you and brings her back in closer to where you're actually going to milk her so uh let's go look at the stanchion now as you see it's just a v tons of space the whole purpose is so it can just free uh, freely move and again i'm sorry this is so close i'm trying to do this by myself but basically uh it, it, it v's in you don't want your v too tight because ultimately uh if you get it too tight you see this gives her room for her head now you see that now if you're wanting to tighten this it makes it where it don't move as much uh, also if it's too loose it won't stand up so what we've done is we'll have them there put her head in if we need and then if she's aggressive or I'm trying to teach a cow you may want to wrap this with some kind of bungee cord or so so it keeps it tight on her so that way she can't pull her head out now I'll be honest with you when I milk it's pretty much like that because a cow builds repetition so I have the little chain on the back that she could easily break if she wanted to, this board that she could easily break if she wants to, and a V that's not even closed on her head. But a cow loves repetition. So I do the same routine every morning. So therefore, that V that, I mean, you know, again, is very, very important if you need it. Um, I don't even have to close it on her head anymore because she she just has learned not to, not to try to back up or try to back out or um, cause any issues there. So but again very important v make sure you have budgie cords or a chain up top because if you are doing more with this stanchion if you're trying to teach a cow or if you're trying to do more with a cow such as deworm or, or shots or um you know whatever it may be uh, you need to be able to control her with that v or control him with that v but pretty much we use it just for milking so it does what it's supposed to do so just a short little video just wanted you to see the stanchion we used uh basically carriage bolts pretty much everywhere or three inch or four inch screws again just to make sure that we got good sturdiness make sure everything is working like it's supposed to um, and also that if, if she does get aggressive or I do have another cow in here if I'm training a, a cow or a heifer to, to learn how to milk it, it's beefy enough to, to control her as well so simple stanchion again if you have a family milk cow or you're thinking about it you need a stanchion if you've got goats 
build a smaller version of this extension because ultimately you need to be able to stand. You may want to build it a little higher and then basically have the same kind of process to teach that goat how to milk as well. So hope this video helped. I know it was just a short little video just on one little singular thing called a stanchion, uh, but a very important piece to a homestead, especially if you have a family milk cow. I hope everybody has a great night. Please subscribe to us. Uh, if you like our videos, tell us about it. Comments, if you have questions, uh, we'll show you anything, tell you anything about our homestead. But ultimately, have a great day and happy homesteading, y'all.